Um, just, just, just a little clarification here. These instruments are not illegal. Let's just make that point really clear. <laughs> They're not illegal. Um, it's just that we need to be careful uh, for our license sake. That's really what it is. And so there's a lot of information. Thank you. That's all right, Lois. There's a lot of information that can be gained from these. Um, the aim of medicine is to prevent disease and prolong life. Would you agree? Yeah. The ideal of medicine, that's what I want to just emphasize here without getting too philosophic on a Friday afternoon. The ideal of medicine is to eliminate the need of a physician. You know, you might say that our mandate is to put ourselves out of business. And um, when we were all introducing ourselves this morning, a number of us said, you know, we just weren't satisfied with what we were doing. There's obviously a lot more that needs to be looked at here. And i um, thank, thankful to uh, Simon here to, prevent, to bring this uh, grouping here together so that we can look at other possibilities. I've been at this for 40-something years, and uh, um, we're just having a great time with this. Apart from the fact that it's great fun, we're actually fixing a lot of people. That's the deal here. And look at my friend Doug here, who's been at it for a couple of years as well, too. And uh, the, it's so soul-satisfying to... Is everybody okay with that? <laughs> We're doing great. That's all right. I don't mind. Thanks. It's so soul satisfying to help people, particularly when they're in chronic illness stages. And every, they've been to everybody on the planet several times over. Slight exaggeration, although some people have been to almost everybody on the planet, as this great man was talking about this morning. And they haven't got any results. So if we're continually looking at patients doing the same thing over and over again and not getting results, that's the definition of insanity. Right? So let's not do that. We're not insane. Well, maybe we are slightly insane. I think you need to be a little insane to do this work as well. Um, the ideal of medicine is to eliminate the need of physician. This is Bill Mayo, by the way, the founder of the Mayo Clinic, which is kind of interesting. So I'm going to jump from there. So I'm going to use this chart to have a little conversation with you here and talk to you about it. Now, I have a good copy of that chart, Sarah, in this, in this, this is why I gave, yes, this is why I gave this to you. And if you can open it up, and you can see it's an eight and a half by 11, and you may have to squint a bit, but it's a big damn chart. So you'll have to see where it goes. One of these, have, have you seen this? You've seen these, a million of these. You can have it if you want. Many of these as you want. Um, <coughs> So if you, if you kind of gaze over here to the other side of the stage, <laughs> you'll see that chart over there called the pathway, bioenergetic pathways of chronic biotoxicosis um, in, the, in this room here on this wall, in this wall right here. And there's a couple of other charts which I've written over the years which are helpful. There's uh, dental interference fields, which I think um, some of you are seeing variations on a theme here about that. Um, and then this one, which has some very unique points relative to EAV or AMA and LMNOP. You know, so we go, go along here. Um, by the way, when Simon was working, I think, on Rick, and we found a number of allergy points, six, I think, we've, we saw there, allergy reading showing up. He was working off the control measure, uh, CMP. Please write this down. It's going to be on the test on Sunday. Oh, no stress, no stress there. Uh, CMP means control measurement point. Control measurement point. It gives us an overview of the working of that meridian system, the meridian pathway. All right? Okay, so if you look at, if you get a chance at the break or something, come up here and take a look at, I was thinking of Rick particularly, but not exclusive to you, but you can see um, that allergy meridian pathway there. And he was working, as I say, on the CMP point, but you can branch up that point and you can find. Um, uh, allergies in the sinuses, allergies in the eyes, allergies in the so on and so forth. In other words, it's that specific. So you can actually branch up in these various areas, like branching up on the lymphatic vessel. In TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, or acupuncture, the outside of the thumb is the lung meridian. In EAV, electroacupuncture according to Vol. EAV, electroacupuncture according to Vol. He saw this as the lymphatic vessel. It's not a meridian, it's a vessel. And then he described this, this uh, line here on the inside of the thumb as the lung meridian. That's just what he found. And there's an amazing manual, if you, if you get good at this and you're interested in it, that Carolyn uh, has copied and put onto 
I mean, all legitimate, onto a beautiful disc. Um, it's, it's basically all of Dr. Vole's points to date um, w until he uh, passed away. You're right, but but if you had the book, it's like this, it's that thick. Right, you can t somewhere along the way. We don't have to do it now, but you can find. There you go. Yeah. So Dr. Vole, to say he was a genius was the understatement of the century. I would would agree. Some of us have met him over the years, and he was a beautiful, elegant man, but very precise, as only the Germans can be. <laughs> yeah, you will do this thing. That's how he how he was with that. Um, here we are today, living working, trying to help people who are suffering from the diseases of civilization. Agree? Epigenetically speaking. They, whoever they are, say our, our genes are 30% genetic, in other words, hardwired, and 70% epigenetic, which is what we're finding all the time, diseases of civilization. That's why it's getting so difficult, increasingly difficult, to work with these polysystemic conditions, because where do you start? You know, you come to this doc and, and you say, well, you got this. You go to this doc, he says, you got this. Who's right? Well, they're all right. Where do you start? And then from there, where do you go? And how do you uh, peel the onion skin would be an example of something. So I'm going to give you three things to write down, please, unless you've got great memory. I want you to, and then we're going to work with this just for a little while here. Maybe this will help you have an understanding of the clinical aspects of what we can do with EAV, AMA, et cetera. <laughs> Um, using the parasite medicines, working with the dental aspects, and then around that as well too. So not limiting it to that, I want to give you a broader view of, of the work which we're doing. Okay, write down the word bioresonance. And then causal chain. Pattern recognition one you use a lot. I like that. Okay. So when Simon was working with, I think, Rick and with many of you as we'll go along throughout the next few days, he made a very good point. He said, one point does not a diagnosis make. Why? Because we're working on the basis of pattern recognition. Right? We do this all the time with lab work, right? We don't just you know, fix the highs and fix the lows and try to put everybody. No, we work on the basis of pattern recognition so we can find out what fits together, how do we put the patient back, how does Humpty Dumpty get put back together again, I suppose, would be a way of describing it. How do we do that? So pattern recognition, and as you begin to learn how to do this, and we teach this in our courses, and um, you can learn this in, in, in a few places, not so many anymore. In the earlier days, there are a lot of classes going on. Now the classes tend to be in the hands of the manufacturers of the instruments, which gets a little tricky, frankly, unless they've got people who are docs who are actually teaching the, teaching the work correctly there. But pattern recognition is the key, and you will begin to see this pattern showing up over and over again, and then you go, ah, I don't have to go testing everything under the sun. I just work with this. I appreciate what Rick was saying here um, insofar as looking for the name of a bacteria or a parasite. You know, that's how we kind of all started off because that's kind of where we came from, right? Uh, but uh, that can be laborious and take hours and hours and hours. And one of the, uh, I'm going to use this probe here, one of the, <laughs> this is this tsunami probe or something here, but um, if you keep hitting this pro the, the probe on the acupuncture point over a period of time, it sedates it. In acupuncture, you're either um, stimulating or sedating. That's what it is. So you're putting your, you're putting your probe in there, just the right amount of water, just the right amount of pressure, just the right angle. It's very important to get that right. And that can be taught. It's not rock. <laughs> George W. said it's not rocket surgery. You know? <laughs> I miss him. He was so useful to us all. But the <laughs> In the land of comedy, catch up, you'll get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you've got to find the right, right pressure, the right angle, and the right amount of water, et cetera, et cetera, to get that in place. And once you're putting a, um, some of us, you have a 2.7, is a 2.7 volt. Um, the Avatar and other instruments use a 1.5. It's what is where it is. You're putting a 1.5 volt current into that acupuncture point, you're actually treating it from the standpoint of a microcurrent, right? So you don't want to keep banging in that point forever and ever and ever. Here's a little tip as you, we're going to start doing this next door and when I 
stop talking or, or maybe Carolyn will carry on for a little bit, I think. Mm -hmm. F yeah, sure, that's gonna help. Yeah. <laughs> Get the dogs out. But what we're <laughs> when, you, when you hit a point, my suggestion is always rub that point out right after you test, right? So you're not constantly tonifying and sedating it and stimulating it, particularly if you're going through a number of, number of, a number of different points to see where you are. Like when we were testing for the various, various remedies and things like that, the various medicines, you don't, it, it, more you keep it, you'll see the readings kind of change a little bit. Did you notice that? They weren't exactly, you know, 46.00832 all the time or whatever that was. I mean, there's a little bit of wiggle room in that, and that's partly because you're, um, you're, you're putting a little current into, into the point, and that's, that's very good. So we're looking at this from the standpoint of pattern recognition. We also want to look at this from the standpoint of bioresonance. Bioresonance may be something that we kind of adapted or adopted from homeopathy. In homeopathy, we talk about like, what? curing like, right? They're, they're similars, that's the, that's the law. Similars here. And so what we're looking for is a match between a point which is out of balance and something which is similar to that point from the standpoint of the oscillatory, vibratory range of things. Can I use that word with you guys? You know? In other words, the, the oscillation of that needs to be similar, and then you get a match, you get a 50. If it isn't similar, you may get a 55, you may get an 80. And then there's the indicator drops, which we'll talk about another time. But you might get an 80 at that point. Well, you're going to find something that actually matches, ideally, Dr. Vol said 50, 0, 0. In other words, no indicator drop, but it had to be right on. That was the, you were pretty much like that too. It's very good. Right on that. So that's bioresonance. And the other aspect of things is causal chain. Nothing is as it appears. Have you noticed? In all of our lives, nothing is the way it appears. There's always so much more going on beneath the surface or around that surface. So as I say, one doctor will say it's this, another doctor will say it's that, another doctor will say it's this. Well, who's right, who's wrong? We're all right. right? But where do you start? Because it's a causal chain. Scottish naturalist John Muir said it beautifully. He said, everything exists as a courtesy to everything else. Right? So that's a, a wonderful thing to think about, but it also is something which you need to be very careful about. Because if you give the wrong medicine at the wrong time, at the wrong level, and out of sequence, you can actually create problems down the road or maybe immediately. So please write this down. Please do it. The right remedy at the right time, in the right level, and within the right sequence. Right remedy, right time, right level, and right sequence. Now, wouldn't that be wonderful if in our prescribing we could do that? The answer, hopefully, is yes. <laughs> the fact of the matter is we can do that with our instrumentation. The right remedy at the right time and the right level and the right sequence. Why? Because we are now measuring the immeasurable. That's the way you put it. Right? We, see where I'm going with all that? Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot to say about this, but let me just go here because... I'll get shot very soon if we go over time here. <laughs> um, this is a chart, uh, a version of a chart by Dr. Hans Heinrich Reykjavik. Some of us remember this from homotoxicology days. Um, Reykjavik was, uh, he started the company Heel, H-E-E-L. Some of you remember that, beautiful company. Um, and many other companies he started and um, passed away. And he developed this process called homotoxicology. And, and Simon alluded to that this morning where he was talking about parasites here and then cancer on the other end. And he, he drew a line like this. Do you remember? You saw that? <laughs> right. And he, he said that there are factors that occur, maybe to a, using his analogy, a little kid crawling around on the floor when he's one or two years old inhaling parasite eggs and nothing shows up. Maybe they get a little poop in their diaper, diaper or something. Poop is a medical term, I think, isn't it, we were talking about, right. Get a little poop in the, in the diaper there, and nothing shows up until all of a sudden, somewhere along the way, he has these horrible degenerative diseases. And nobody can attach the fact that the kid swallowed these paras live parasite eggs when the kid was a year and a half. That's good medicine. So we're not constantly working with our patients who come in like this, and you give them this and suppress it and cut it out and burn it out, etc. We're actually bringing something up from inside. You know, the vital force, the healing current, actually, is what fixes people, as far as I'm concerned. You agree? You know, no medicine has ever cured anybody. 
You know, I've, all my medicines which I make here, I haven't fixed anybody. You know, uh, Hahnemann said it well, we're removing obstacles to cure. Bioresonance, causal chains, right? Pattern recognition. We're going in there and we're finding exactly the right pattern of resonance for that patient. We'll treat you as if you have parasites. I thought that was a good way to describe it, right? As if, you know, we don't know whether you have, but all right, we'll treat it as if. Well, they do have parasites. And we're not saying nudge, nudge, wink, wink, they don't have parasites. The signal or the signature of those parasites are present in what's called the mesenchyme. The meridian is a mirror. I got excited there. Do you see that? The meridian is a mirror of the mesenchyme. So the signature of that parasite, whether it's actually there or not, really is sort of incidental from our standpoint. But we treat it as if it is and, you know, exto, expecto patronum. You know, <laughs> people get better. You've seen it. We've seen that those of us have been doing this. So this is a chart that uh, I made up based on, on the work of Dr. Uh, Heinz Heiner Reckwig and homotoxicology is the continuation of that. And I, 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 that's what you're looking at in your, in your notes there. The remedies which I make are designed to work within this pattern, but not unique to that. I suggest that if you're going to be doing this and working with this, um, work with the way uh, Simon's teaching it because it's, it's perfect. It's a very different way than I, I work, um, which is perfect too. <laughs> and it's a different way than you work which is we all find our own ways to do this, but the principles are the same. And there's variations on a theme. I'm a naturopathic physician, so I'd work at this from a different perspective, a different paradigm than Simon, who's an internist, you know, who works at it from this standpoint. Okay, so basically, just really, really quickly here. You got another five, will that be okay with that? Okay, good. Um, if you look up here on your far right or left of your depends if you're Canadian or not, <laughs> on this chart, you'll see if a toxin enters into the body, the first thing the body wants to do is what? Get rid of it. And it does it. Seven exits, no waiting. Isn't that right? You pee it out, you puke it out, you cry it out, you poop it out, all these sorts of things. And if that doesn't, if that doesn't get it, and usually it gets it in the earlier day, stages of things, but if it doesn't, and we practice suppressively with the best of intentions, what happens? That toxin, which could have been released through, for example, the skin or the respiratory system or the lymphatic system in the earlier stage of, of, the, uh, of the toxicity pattern there, gets driven into a, into a deeper level where the body creates an, an inflammatory process. Every, all of these so-called disease conditions you see here on this chart are healing strategies. They're not, the symptoms are not designed to be feared. They are healing strategies designed to be noted from the standpoint of pattern recognition or a causal chain. I don't know about you, but I've seen in this, this last couple of years massive loads of pancreatitis, inflammation of the pancreas. And so patients will come to us and they've been on all sorts of anti-inflams and NSAIDs and all the rest. But from the standpoint of the causal chain of pancreatitis, typically speaking, based on the work of Dr. Schimmel, who was a student of Dr. Vohl, he split with Dr. Vohl in 1978-79, something along those lines I think is what it was. Um, there are these causal chain patterns where you can see you can go after that pancreas and you can get the inflammation down, but at what cost? There's always an equal and opposite reaction, isn't it? There's always a price to pay for what we do, all, any of our work, all of our work there. But we find that that causal chain from the standpoint of the pancreas has to do with the duodenal patterns, the gallbladder patterns, the, small, the large intestine pattern, and the sinuses. In fact, Dr. Vole said the teeth, the sinuses, the Peyer's patches, remember those in school? You know, gut-associated lymphoid tissues and all the rest there. Right? And the paranasal sinus cavity were the primary things that he found in his work. And you will find that if you look at, if you go out and buy dolls again, that little Ken, Chinese Ken doll that we saw over there, and you run the gallbladder meridian all the way up there over the, it's all right, there it is, good, over, the, over, the, over that, and you can see the large intestine, the gallbladder uh, bifurcating there and into the sinus cavity. Very, very interesting. Which were the ones that he thought were most important? Um, well, everything was important, but he said something, but you're right, he said, and, and uh, Doug, Doug will get into this in a bit, but he said somewhere between 75 and 85% of the conditions he saw started here, 
or can be seen in the mouth. So he saw the teeth, the odontomas is the word he used there, the paranasal sinus cavity, tonsils, pyres, patches, that sort of thing. Yeah. If you look at that, we're all, he's talking immune, 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 right? Tonsils are lymphatic immune, that's right. And any aspect of the immune system, uh, like the tonsils, uh, gallbladder is part of the immune system too, by the way. You know, kidneys are part, can be part of the immune system. They all have the ability to create stones, right? Tonsillates and, and, and inside every, every stone, just to keep the, the, uh, the, the story going relative to our work here today, inside every stone is a ba is bacteria, usually fascialis, something along those lines, and parasites inside every stone. So if you're going to do a gallbladder flush, flush or you're going to get some lithotropy on the kidneys, etc., rabbit punches there, right? Um, be properly prepared because it's going to release parasites into circulation. It's going to release bacteria into circulation. Stealth viruses, mycoplasmas, mycotoxins, all contained within the stone. The stone is a healing strategy. Right? It's designed to keep everything in place, like the tonsils. Keep it all in place so the virus isn't all over the body, systemically speaking. It's there, right? And so what do we do when kids have uh, tonsillitis? If thy tonsils offend thee, take them out and, and see the adenoids are there to eat what the hell. You know, take them out to the vestigial, like your appendix and things like that. But you can see how when we're working with the standpoint of bioresonance and causal chains there and pattern recognition, one point, one reading does not a diagnosis make. So what happens is something creates, uh, in other words, something that could have been taken care of here ends up as a prostate problem as an example. These are just examples there. And so you go and you get your, you get your terp and then you do all sorts of things and the prostate gets reamed and maybe they take it out and all that so the body no longer has a prostate. But the body, you could say, in, from an oscillatory standpoint, yeah? or the, the energetic aspect of it, remember it's, it's energy we're talking about here at that point, the prostate is still there. My mother-in-law, British, you can hear my accent a bit here, um, she worked at McCormick's Candy Factory, Gordy, I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, um, and, and uh, she got her finger caught in one of these stupid machines, but this is back in the early 50s, you know. And uh, the, the doctor was very kind because she just had that left. And so he said, well, you'll just, Take it, take off this knuckle here. So, when you look at when you looked at her, um, she looked a little strange and didn't really know what it was. But it was like that, and so I would say to her as her son-in-law, "Hey, so give me four, you know." <laughs> she loved me, but she, <laughs> but she, <laughs> she, uh, she would would say that on certain days she would look down to see if her finger was there because it was itching, right? The phantom limb idea, etc. Well. The people you know, in our science today will say what's well, actually happening up here is not happening there. I think, it's, I think it's happening here and I think it's happening there. I think it's all part of, part of one thing. So Simon is giving me a peace sign. Is that what you were doing? <laughs> oh no, I thought it So what happens is if the toxin no longer can get relieved out of that point and goes deeper. Do you know the word xenobiosis, xenobiotic? Everybody familiar with that? Toxin would be a way of describing it. Gets driven deeper, gets driven deeper, becomes a different level of symptomatology, a different form of something which could have been taken care of at this level, right? And then moves into degeneration, which is what you were describing there. So that's kind of an interesting chart that you want to look at. The thing uh, in my, that I want to leave you with here is this. When you're doing this work, um, don't go in gangbusters. I think you emphasize this very well, too. You know, be cautious and um, not, don't be afraid. I mean, sometimes we just need to, you know, is the word balls to the wall, does that work for you? You know, you just, you, sometimes you just got to go for it and that's just fine, good enough. But be, be kind and I, I suggest, there you go, I suggest that what, you, what you'll want to do here, before you go too deep with the patient, you know, you need to anesthetize before you do surgery, anesthetize before you do surgery. Thank God we have anesthetics, right? Marcaine 2%, thank God for that, right? <laughs> we want that. So um, what we want to do is make sure that the pathways for drainage are open. In homeopathy, we used to call it the amunctories. Some of you know those words, which are like the kidney. You're talking about this. The kidney, the skin, the liver, the lungs, etc. Why? Because as the body begins to detoxify with parasites and heavy metals and fungus and mycoplasmas, 
diseases of civilization, right? Not only that from a physical standpoint, big comma, um, what we're looking at here from the standpoint of acupuncture, which is what it is, we're looking at the physical nature of things, we're also looking at the mental aspects of things and the emotional aspects of things. The issues are in the tissues, have you noticed? Good bumper sticker. The issues are in the tissues. When you start working with somebody, for example, the parasites start, start leaving, um, people can get really crazy. Like these little kids with tapeworms, right? Pinworms, rather. When the full moon is out, these kids go crazy because it's itchy and all the rest. But something's going on. Lunacy, right? That's, so that's, that's what that means there. So remember, you're not just working with the physical form of things. There's a mental aspect and an emotional aspect to it. And that's, all of that is part of one thing, and there's more to it, but part of one thing. So my suggestion here is you need to find the right remedy, the right time, the right level, and then the right sequence, but make sure that you've got the liver working well. I appreciated Dr. Liu's uh, uh, direction on that. I'm just going to show you something, and then I'm going to leave the floor to our dear friend Carol. Can you take out this little catalog here? <coughs> I just want to show you a couple of these things that might be helpful to you. From the standpoint of um, getting the liver sorted out, can you get on, go on to page 27? 27. Do you have it? You okay, Doug? You got it? Yeah, okay. Um, it's called hepatogess. Um, how many of you are familiar with phase one and phase two of the liver detoxification pathways? Okay, good. Um, this is designed to assist with the intermediate metabolites which are formed when we're taking the fat-soluble substance xenobiotics and converting it into the water-soluble xenobiotics that can go out through the biliary tree and the kidneys. That's what that's designed to do. So it works not only with phase one itself and phase two the, itself, but the conversion, which are those intermediate metabolites. And it comes in a powder there, which is um, from the standpoint, you know, I make these remedies and I'm um, all across the states and all across Canada, and it's only by, you know, you have to be a doctor, you're not prescription, but you can't buy them on the internet and you can't buy them, you know, in, in the pharmacy per se. You, ha you have to do it, right? That's, that's what it is. So it keeps everybody fine. But the, uh, this is a powder, a powdered beverage. And this remedy is probably the best selling remedy I have worldwide. Other things that you want to look at here from the standpoint of detoxification, gentle detoxification, if you're not familiar with homeopathy or botanicals, on the next page, uh, page 28, it says hypozymase. That's a two-phase digestive enzyme. It works on the basis of the gut, HCL, and so on and so forth, but also on the small intestine. You can't separate them. That's what's working out there. So you, can, you want to take a look at this when you get a chance, and I'll be around for you know, through Saturday anyways, and we can talk about this. The other side of, of this little catalog, to give you an idea of things, has to do with these intrinsic botanicals. These are spagyric botanicals, uh, page 33. I'm going really quickly here, sorry. If you had more time, I could do more for you here. But if you look at them, like the Artemisia intrinsic, these spagyric botanicals are a very powerful botanical. These are made on the basis of Rudolf Steiner's work. Some of you know about that. But well, the soil is homeopathically inje injected. It's so and so. I mean, these are, I'm, real, I'm really anal when it comes to the, I, did I take them? So your kids take them and we got to get that right. But these but spagyric botanicals take me somewhere between 60 and 90 days to make. They're handcrafted. And I could say they're somewhere between a powerful botanical and a homeopathic because they carry the energetic signature of those. That's what those are about. And if you go further in there, you'll see the homeopathic detoxifiers, something like uh, on page 46, where it says mycoplasmatox. How many of you are finding mycoplasmas other than just pneumonia? Well, if you're not, you're not looking. That's why, because it's, there you go, because it's present everywhere. I got it. I got it here. Yeah. I'll give you more time in the evening tonight. Okay, so well, give some more time. sure, if that's, some, if that's something you find useful, I'd like to do it. But these are detoxifiers. Um, every one of these detoxifiers have mesenchyme. Here we go, and a 6X and a 9X and, uh, and, a, and a 6C. So it's a detoxifier, and if you know homeopathy, it's also sarcode-like, etc. So every one of these remedies are, because I came from EAV, uh, when I made my remedy line years and years ago, you can see this right about here, and you can see the lack of it up here, which tells you how hard I've been working there. <laughs> when I made these remedies, it was based on the work which we're doing here, and they're specifically bioresonant, 
causal chain and pattern recognition, working with this and as one idea of something, but there's much more than that. Anyway, thank you very much for your attention. Um, I do a 100-hour training course, it's a certified course, and it's, uh, you come one long weekend uh, four times a year. Easy enough, three-day weekend is what it is. And I've been doing them in the, in the uh, megalopolis of London, Ontario, which I know is one of your favorite places to visit, you know, there. But we do them in, uh, in Santa Barbara, California, where I live, just down the hill from where I live, so it makes it easy for me to do that, you know. And uh, in Europe and different parts across the States, so people who have these instruments and they come and they learn how to do this from the standpoint of what I'm, I'm speaking about here. Um, just top of my head here, I, um, why we have our, a faculty of NDs and D, a lot of chiropractors and a um, number of dentists, etc. You know what might be a kind of an interesting thing to do, just speaking in front of everybody, is to bring some of your work in that too. Maybe do, do a little section in that, you know, or, or maybe even play your video in that so that people can actually see what we're doing, not just from a uh, botanical, homeopathic, nutritional standpoint, which is kind of limiting this instrumentation. I mean, this is a broad, broad scope here, so we need to think about that. Yeah, we'll talk about it, huh? Um, about a beer and a half, I think, would do it. Is that how, what Katie says you're allowed to have? Yeah. <laughs> he goes wacko after a beer and a half. So, <laughs> this is why we love him so. Um, just uh, a month ago in Santa Barbara, we did an EAV master session um, for people who've been around for a while. And it was great. I invited like 75 people and, and 45 were able to come. It was very good, very inexpensive and a beautiful Santa Barbara. How bad could it be? Right on the water, tough, huh? Katie had a horrible time, I know that, it was great. But uh, uh, so we do various classes around, around the world. The instrument which I've been using here is the one that Simon was working with, with you, Rick? Rick? Yeah, um, there, it's called the Avatar. Great little instrument, you saw it, the software in it. Um, I think it's 13,500 and it comes with an imprinter and an inverter, which is kind of more like in a way sort of. It was a, um, uh, no, nah, I won't go there, but you get the idea. In other words, it, it's kind of all one-stop shop and that's been around for about 23, 24 years, I think. Just a wonderful, wonderful instrument. Uh, a very, very small company, great support, great support, great software. You saw the software on that. It made it very easy to navigate through that, you know, it's got the moron factor in for, which I appreciate personally more than you can imagine perhaps. So, um, so that's the avatar and I, I can talk to you a bit about that, but I'm not wed to one instrument. I think the kindling is a great instrument. The one that Gordon uses, it really is, you know. And I think that what, you, what you're doing, Carolyn, has been amazing over all these years. What, you were only 39 when you, you know, last week, weren't you, you said? I think, yeah, that's what you said, wasn't it? Uh, the, more, the more equipment is, is, is a beautiful piece of equipment. So really, you've got three or four pieces of, it, of equipment to look at here. Some of you may just want to get, you know, the $1,200 one just to start off with. And some of you may want to go, you know, all the way through to, to pick something else up. The Avatar is kind of middle of the road, um, but uh, it, I, I use it in dental surgery. Anyway, who are the dentists? You? Just you? It's a lonely business, isn't it? Yes, I know. <laughs> but we use it for cavitation surgery as well, too. Yeah, of course, you know about that, Doug. Where we're, I'm actually monitoring where the dentist is going, where to flat the gum, you know, how deep to go, where to find out where the, uh, where the nerve, nerves are, and so on and so forth. Is it clean? Do you have to go back in the retromotor? Do you have to go up in the ramus, you know? And then we can do the bi take the biopsies from it and make remedies from that as well, too. So the avatar can do all of that, and it can find your greatest hits. You know, the